the moon's very high in the sky near Zenith, and there's Venus shining bright over there in the west. It's a good opportunity, or at least the best opportunity I'm probably going to get all week, to test out the Celestron Astromaster 70 LT70AZ and the Skywatcher Mercury 707. Now, these are going to be bought by a lot of people starting out, so it's important to choose the one that's going to give you the best experience, which is going to be the one that's primarily going to be the easiest to use, less frustrating to use. What I'm going to do is start off with the Celestron here. I'm going to use the red dot finder to line up with Venus and then try and get the view in the main eyepiece and see what the views are like. And then repeat that process with the Skywatcher. Probably go back and forth a couple of times and then give you my opinion. Simple as that, in theory. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do that now then. So really quick to find the target in the red dot. And uh, let me have a look. Ah, I think I've got the high power eyepiece in, so I'm just quickly switch that out. The low power eyepiece is going to be easier to find objects with, so that's the one you want to start with. Aha, and it's there, it's out of focus, it's on the edge of the view. So I'm just going to try and adjust that to get that in the middle of the eyepiece. Initial conclusion from that is it's really easy to find the object with a red dot finder, but the pan arm, when you fish around for an object, get in the eyepiece, get in the middle, and you lock it off, it, it will just drop down a touch. So you have to lock it off just slightly with the telescope pointing down, and then it will kind of relax up a touch. So I'm going to move on to the Sky Watcher now. So this has got an optical finder 24 by 6 times. Yeah, got it. This one moves quite nicely actually. So I've not actually done up this arm that locks in place. You can do that up and then use this wheel to move the telescope up and down but I found that if you tighten just both either side of the telescope with these wing nuts undo that and you can it kind of balances and you can move it up and down this one stays where you leave it this one actually feels surprising to me this one actually feels better okay so next target the moon that's going to be quite high up near zenith using the Celestron. Let's have a look. Super easy with the red dot finder. The red dot finder is just better than the optical finder. The only downside is when you forget to turn it off and you come out to use the telescope again and you've got a flat battery. That's where the optical finder wins. No batteries needed for that. Yeah, it's a Bit more difficult to line up with a pan handle. It's there though, I can see it. And yeah, it just drops down a little bit when you lock it off. You soon get used to it, but it's just not as well balanced as the Sky Watcher. Okay, I've got it kind of where I want it now, so I'll try and focus. And the wobble will settle down after if I tap it or focus. It wobbles for probably four or five seconds, settles down. I can see into the craters, okay? I can see the mare, a thin veil of clouds coming in. It's not bad, I think for the money that's not a bad view. Let's try the Sky Watcher. Again with the higher power 10 mil eyepiece given 70 times. This just moves a bit better to straight the way, but the to call finder, see how that does. Yeah, that's just not as quick. I can't see where I am as easy. It's a bit less intuitive for a beginner, I think. 
wow, I can see lots of, I can see a rainbow around the moon through this finder scope. There's pink and then there's violet. It's, it's quite funny. But I don't feel the need to lock it off, it just balances. And I'm, I'm just literally making micro adjustments and it's going exactly where I want it. That is, that's sharper. Move this again and see if I can. And the celeste drum wobbles more. Uh, try and remember that view. Go over to this one. Go over to the sky watcher. Where's the moon? There we go. I found it straight away. I can just move it where I want. If my son's awake, I'm going to grab him and get his opinion, see what, which one he likes. Do you think they're about the same on average or different on average um, or...? I think that one falls down a bit. The, the Celestron falls down yeah. a bit. Yeah, I found that. When you, when you kind of let go of it, it kind of sags a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you, I mean, I found this one, just wherever you leave it, it just stays. I'm, I'll have another look at this one and see if I can improve it. But my initial thought is, apart from the finder scope being harder to use, the actual telescope for the Skywatcher is easier, I think. But yeah. the red dot finder, I'm finding easier to yeah. find the moon but then this kind of like, it doesn't quite stay where you put it. So it's harder to actually look through the actual telescope. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, okay, cool. All right, thanks for your help. Yeah, it's better, isn't it, the red dot? I almost want to kind of take that off there and put it on that one. <laughs> I think that'd be the best combination. Okay, thanks, Alex. What I'll do now actually is I'll go and grab a good quality PLOS lie piece and put it in both and see if that improves the image or not. Let's do that next got my Explore Scientific 10 mil, 52 degrees, argon purged eyepiece. It's a much better quality eyepiece than what you get with it, with most telescope bundles. So we'll be able to determine whether the optics fall down with the eyepieces or the actual um, objective lens of the refractors or not. So I think this will be quite telling. Because as it stands, the Skywatch is giving me sharper views. Come on. Yeah, okay. I think it's actually, I think it's a case of getting the tension right with, on the pan handle. Ooh, it does sag a bit still. Yeah, it, I think it's just always going to sag. How much better is it going to be with the Explore Scientific? Oop, it does sag. Come on. Ah, there you go. Yep, that's sharper. Okay, there's definite improvement by adding a better eyepiece. There's very little colour fringing on the disc of the moon. The moon's occupying the majority of the field of view, but I can see all the way around the outside, just a fairly reasonably thin kind of purple, purpley yellow tint. The detail looks a lot sharper now noticeably sharper. It's not like a ton sharper, but it's noticeably sharper. Cool. Okay, let's try with the Sky Watcher. Slightly heavier eyepiece is affecting the bones a touch. Oh yeah, that's lovely and sharp. I still think this has got the edge on the optics. I think the colour fringing is the same. So that that does show that the the F10, 70mm aperture F10, is behaving the same in terms of chromatic aberration, colour correction. I think I think the optics of the Skywatcher are a touch sharper still, but there's going to be natural in any mass production, there's going to be a bit of variation. One lens is going to be always be better figured than another 
but they should all be diffraction limited. They should all be of a certain quality. Okay, final thoughts. I, f I prefer the Skywatcher. The balance point's really nice. It just stays where you put it. Um, the views are slightly better with the supplied eyepieces. The only downside, the thing I don't like, is the finder scope. The red dot finder of the Celestron is easier to use with the caveat that you can forget to turn it off, in which case it's useless when you next come out to use the telescope because you've got a flat battery. That's not going to happen with the optical finder. The optical finder on the Skywatch is almost funny. It's the worst chromatic aberration I've ever seen. It's, it's got layers like a rainbow, but it's almost comical. I almost quite like it for its comedy effect, but it does a, the job. You can find the object with it. That's all you need it to do, especially at that price point. But yeah, so I've got my 11 year old son out. Um, he preferred the view through the Sky Watcher, which kind of matched what I was saying. Um, initially, he preferred sort of how to find the object with the Celestron. Uh, I tweaked the, um, the locking screw on the Sky Watcher and got him to repeat it, and it was the opposite story. So I think there is a part of this where you could just go back and forth and change your mind a bit, depending on how things are set up. So it's difficult to say anything conclusively here because I could come out another night and have a different opinion. But one, one thing that's bugging me about the Celestron is it sags down. It doesn't stay where you leave it. You lock the handle and it will sag down and settle in a position slightly not where you want it to. So you kind of have to plan ahead and raise your eyepiece up a bit further, lock it, and then let it settle down. But for the cost of both of these, 119, got some cracking views of the moon. And I could see the phase of Venus. So it was worth doing. It was worth borrowing these so I could do this test. Because now when I advise people and they don't want a tabletop Dobsonian, which is super stable and simple to use, I'm going to feel less conflicted when they point out the refractor, the Mercury 707, for example. I'm going to feel less conflicted that they're going to struggle with it when they get it home because I'm enjoying it, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a conclusion. Cool. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. hope it was educational in some way. If you liked it, consider subscribing. And, uh, yeah, until next time. Astro Vista.